the God of the Bible is giving you your own testimony. Look at that person next to you and say, neighbor, neighbor. the God of the Bible, the God of the Bible. is giving you, giving you your own testimony. testimony. Praise the Lord. If you wonder what's happening right now in your life, the God of the Bible is giving you your own testimony. Lord, why haven't this worked? Lord, why haven't that worked? Lord, what is this condition? Lord, what is that? The God of the Bible is giving you your own testimony. She has hers, and he has his, and they have theirs, but God is currently giving me my own. Say amen. Praise the Lord. You know what I'm talking about. It's giving you your own. Father, now speak to us. Remove every hindering, everything, every hindrance that would block the word. May we preach today with power and authority. Cause your face to ever shine upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. The God of the Bible. Is giving you your own testimony. Allow me to begin this message by making a statement that I um, will explain. And this statement, I did not coin this phrase. It is commonly said in theological circles. And the statement is simply this. God has no grandchildren. God has no grandchildren. All children of God are sons and daughters. No grandchildren. We have grandchildren, but God has no grandchildren. God made grandchildren. And for those of us who are God parents, we understand fully why God Call them grand. Praise the Lord. They're marvelous. But in terms of our relationship with God, there is not a line in the relationship, relationship for grandchildren. What we mean by this is that redemption cannot be inherited. Each person must experience the Lord for themselves. You can't make it on your daddy's relationship with God. Amen. You can't make it. Say, well, I'm trusting in the God that my mother knew. You won't stay saved long like that. You can't know him through your mother. You have to know him for yourself. I praise God for family, but a common error in families is that families try to know God on the family plane. And you can't know the Lord on the family plane. We're going to move at the pace that mom set or dad set. We're going to all lift our hands when we lift our hands. We will all praise him when we pray. You can't know him that way. Amen. Uh, some people who tried to know the Lord on the Paul plan got messed up. Some young men went up to a, a, a man, the seven sons of Siva. And they tried to cast the devil out of a man and said, we cast you out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached. Them demons looked at him and that man with the one man looked at seven men and said, Jesus we know. Paul 
we know. But who are you? And that one man ran those seven men out of the temple naked. If it hasn't happened yet, you will have an experience with God or an experience in life that will be of such a challenge uh, that if you don't know him for yourself, you won't make it. See, I'm, 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 I'm upsetting some people's theology today because you, you thought you could make it because your grandma was very, very faithful and said, uh, I understand the song. She, she had a praying grandmother, but her prayers, she better thank God she met the Lord for herself though. Bible says, the God of the Bible says this, uh, each believer has to experience the Lord for themselves. Revelation 22, 17, the B clause says, let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him come. It's individual. You must come to the Lord for yourself. Our Lord said this in John 7 and, and, and 37, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I had the greatest pastor who ever lived. If I ever become the tenth of a pastor. If I'm ever to someone that that man was to me, that I will have been a good leader. He's been around the throne for almost 31 years now. If my only relationship with the Lord would have been through him. I know Jesus whom Elder Turner preached. I wouldn't have made it. I've been through too many days and nights. Too many battles I've had to fight. Too many victories and too many defeats. Too many hardships. Too many losses. And too much gain. To make it. To still be here. On fire. With my mind made up. If I didn't know him. For myself. Mother Turner, you wouldn't be here. Much as you loved him. Slept in the same bed. Poor his children. But if you, you had, you couldn't stop with just loving the Lord because you had a praying husband. The next step had to be you had to love him for yourself. See, every, every believer See, so everybody, everybody's got to have their own. That's right. What the, what was it, Simone? Uh, it says, Mama may have, Daddy may have, but God bless the child who has his own. I have my own experience with. The Lord. Are you with me? Every believer has got to be able to say, I tried him and I know him. Am I right about that? In the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, if you say amen, I won't preach long. This 43rd chapter uh, is in direct contrast to chapter 42. The chapters are joined together by the opening phrase, 
which says, but now. Amen. That lets you know that God took a turn. It's in chapter 42. 42 starts out with the Lord speaking of Jesus as a pro, Isaiah, Isaiah uh, speaking prophetically uh, about Jesus being the Lord's, the Messiah being the faithful servant. But by the time this chapter closes, we find Israel, the nation, uh, uh, being referred to as being both blind and deaf. They were special, but they couldn't see. And they couldn't hear. Verse 18 says, Hear ye deaf, deaf, and look ye blind, that you may see. Who is blind? But my servant, speaking of Israel, or deaf, or as uh, my messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect? Who is as blind as the nation to whom I've given special privileges and they can't even see? Oh, you're blind when the Lord has blessed you and you can't see that you're blessed. Blind. It says, you're blind. I've given you privileges and uh, uh, as blind as the Lord's servant. Seeing many things but thou observest not. You know, I've given you so much to observe. I've shown you my glory, but you don't see it. You, you wonder sometimes, what does God have to do to get some of us to get off the fence? So what, what must you preach? At, at what, what does God have to do to get you to just grab hold and say, I won't let go? It says, you, you see many things. But thou observeth them not. Opening the ears, but heareth not. I, I, I've given you the ability to hear, but you still refuse to hear. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Uh, he will magnify the law and make it honorable. Their claim was uh, that they, they didn't think that God would listen and that God would magnify, that is, that the Lord would shape the law through their dishonoring behavior, that God would somehow change his rules to make it all right for them. God doesn't operate that way. Can I get a witness? He says, but this people is a robbed and spoiled. You see that? But this is a People robbed and spoiled, they are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth that nobody rescues them for a spoil and none restore. Do you see that? Then he asks the question, who among you will give ear? Who's going to listen? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to robbers? Uh, who allowed these actions to take place? The person who allowed these actions to take place was the Lord himself. But in chapter 43, you see the Lord taking a sharp turn. He says, but now. Thus saith the Lord, that created thee, follow me now. You don't mind if I read the scripture. That created thee, O Jacob. Notice here, he's not calling them blind. But he, call, he refers to them as Jacob and Israel, which are comparatively terms of endearment. He says, but now, thus saith the Lord, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, he says to them, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. What a mighty God we serve. You see, uh, the Lord is going to do 
a new thing here. See, this, this new thing according to uh, verse 19, and I'm going to skip around and go back. Uh, I, I, want, I want to show you something in, in verse 19 of... Uh, Well, let me show you this. In chapter 42 and verse 10, before we do, deal with the new thing, see, God is going to give them songs, things to sing, to describe, and uh, how he brought them out. It says in verse chapter 42, verse 10, it says, Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praises from the ends of the earth, that you go down to the sea. And all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, and the villages of Kadar doth in, inhabit, and let the inhabitants of the rocks sing. Let them shout uh, from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the isles. Now, stay with me here as I show you what the Lord is speaking of. In verse 19, he says, But I will do a new thing, and it shall come forth, and uh, it shall come forth, shall ye not know it. The new thing, the new song that God is going to give them to sing is a song that will declare his goodness and his delivering, his delivering them not from Egypt, but his delivering them from Babylon. In verse 1, we see the entire story of redemption complete. He says in verse 1, I created you, I formed you, I redeemed you. I named you because you're mine. That's redemption. Created you, formed you, redeemed you, and named you because you're mine. The same God who called nature in existence called a nation in existence. According to verse 21 of chapter 43 of the A clause, he says, this people have I formed for myself. God reached over into Ur of the Chaldees, found a young heathen while living in Mesopotamia named Abram, appeared to Abram and told Abram, leave your father's house because I'm going to make you the father of a nation, a new people. God created in Abram the Jewish race. And he made this race to be a servant nation. The B clause of verse 21 uh, says, uh, they shall show forth my praise. This nation that I made, follow me now, for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Interesting thing here is that the word show forth, safar is the uh, a Hebrew word. It means to recount. It means to score with a mark or as a tally. It means to keep a record, to recount, to tell, to make known. It means to, to be a secretary. It is to write down the deeds. See, the Jewish fathers taught their children to recount all the miracles and the mighty deeds that the Lord has done. Parents, talk to your children about the Lord. We're talking to them about everything else. We talk to them about sports. We talk to them about entertainment. We talk to them about whatever they want to talk about. Talk to them about the Lord. Talk to them about the Lord. Remind them of where the Lord has brought them from. Let them know about what the Lord did for their mama and their daddy. Let them know that the Lord saved you. Talk to your children about the Lord. See, it needs, it needs, to, be, it needs to be woven in them. It doesn't need to be, uh, it, uh, God shouldn't be superficial. They should know him on a, a, a deep level. And, and they should know him early. 
talk to them about the Lord. He says, I raised up this nation. Now follow me. This nation and their goal, their job is to show forth my praise. That is to write down, to recount, to tell of the things that I've done. It is similar to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 26 where Paul teaches that every time we have communion, he says, we do show the Lord's death till he come. Now, do show comes from a, a Greek word that literally means to declare, to declare plainly, to tell out loud. So Isaiah here in chapter 43, verse 21, this nation is, was called to do what the communion was supposed to do. Israel as a nation was called to do what the communion does as a sacrament. It tells God's story. Every one of us have been saved to tell God's story. To tell of his goodness. To declare it. To keep record. To write it down. To make it known. This is why I push back against this uh, victim mentality. The, the whiners mentality that is so pervasive in the church today. God didn't save us to be whiners. God didn't save us to be victims. God saved us to keep record, praise the Lord, of his goodness and to declare his goodness among the nations, to tell people of his praiseworthiness. Hence the word um, to show forth my praise. The word praise here is the word tehila, and the tehila praise is a song of praise that recounts God's praiseworthiness. It's a, they, these are songs uh, and expressions that talk about how good he's been and what he has done for us. So uh, the, the nation was raised up to show forth God's praise, to tell the rest of the world that their God is good. As a matter of fact, Psalms 23 and verse 1 says, Look at who my shepherd is. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That psalm is, among other things, a tehillah. For it speaks of God's goodness, God's kindness, and the Lord's faithfulness. Psalms 145 says, I will extol thee. My God, O King, I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and great, and his greatness is unsearchable. This is a Tehillah. So Israel was, this servant nation was created to speak of his goodness. Praise the Lord. As the communion was put in place to show the Lord's death. Jesus did not just pass out on our behalf. Jesus died. He died a vicarious death. He died the death that we should have died. He died on our behalf. He didn't die on his behalf. Jesus had no sin. Jesus had no shortcomings. Jesus never missed the boat. Jesus didn't love me so much that he did without so I can have. Jesus didn't love me so much that he inconvenienced himself on my behalf. Jesus didn't merely love me so much that he went out of the way so that I could be blessed. Jesus loved me so much that he died for me. He paid the ultimate sacrifice. For all of us. And the communion, that's what it means. He died for me. Well, the Lord raised up Israel as a servant nation to tell the world that of his goodness. 
to let them know that our God is superior. That's why I don't go along with this, uh, this garbage they got out now, you know, all this. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I believe that people should practice their own religion, but you'll never get me to believe that one religion is as good as the other. You'll never get me to go along with that. You never get me to believe that the God of Islam and the God of the Bible is the same God. And the God of Buddhism and the God of the Bible uh, is the same God of these. Uh, but Buddhism has no God at all. Whatever, uh, th th these, they're not the same. And we're, when we talk about the God of the Bible, depending upon where we are, you can't just say God. You got to identify what God you're talking about. Whose God? Which God? Because there are so many gods now. The politicians, all of them are good at saying, God bless America. I'm waiting for one to say, God bless America in Jesus' name. Now, that's the one that I'm waiting for because that distinguishes him. Allah hadn't blessed America. Allah can't bless the Middle East. Allah is the God of war. Praise the Lord. We are called to represent one God and to declare his goodness among the people. Amen. And he says uh, that I raised you up, upper room. I believe, I believe, I know you may say, wouldn't you go on too far now? I believe that God raised this church up for a specific purpose. I believe that we are among God's servant nation. Yes, Praise the Lord. We can't get much help, especially from our community, to go out to the abortion clinics to fight for the unborn. Most of the time, you know yourself that you get shunned when you tell them, I go to upper room. Many times, they, they, they frown on what we stand for. For many of you hadn't been raised up. You told the party line. You say what leftists tell you to say. You, you make a position at the expense of your own belief. I'd be ashamed. I'd be ashamed. I'm going to say it. I'd be ashamed. I'd be ashamed to be identified with a group of people. I ain't going to say party. A group of people who is a is fighting to keep a, someone from being appointed uh, to the Supreme Court. And their argument is, you might, uh, it may end same-sex marriage, or it may end abortion. I'd be ashamed to name the name of Christ and then walk lockstep with somebody who don't want same-sex marriage overturned and who don't want the merciless killing of the unborn to come to an end. I'd be ashamed to be identified. Nobody's going to say this. That look like me. Not with my platform, but me. Ain't nobody going to say amen the way y'all say amen. This is why God have called. Don't get me started. God have called us to be a servant nation, to fight the good fight of faith. And not only did God call us, but God made us a promise. Ask me, what is the promise? What's the, what's the promise? Say it again. What's the Say it again. What's the when thou passest through the water. <laughs> Verse 2. When, when you pass through the waters, huh? I will be with thee. And when you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. In other words, trial by fire. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Now, now, this is good news, but it also tells us that there's some rough waters ahead. 
that there is a river that you must cross that there is fire that we must face but thank God whatever lies ahead the Lord made a promise that I'll be with you and let me tell you I'm just like Moses God if your presence go not with us do not take us from this place but I'm here to say that if you have the Lord's presence Paul said if God be with us who can be against us right here is a good place to stop and to lift your hands and to praise the God of the Bible hallelujah I don't care what the world says I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad oh glad somebody and tell them the Lord is with us oh yeah I know I know some of you've had family members they don't come back here anymore good God almighty we left because what he said about Obama they didn't say I left I left because he was wrong but he, but he didn't tow the party line. That's right. Don't want to mess with them. And not the, they never accuse us of being, of being unscriptural. No, that, that's, not the, that's not the accusation because we, we preach the Bible. But, 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 but we, 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 we have the nerve to agree with God. The, I was told, see, I want to tell the church of God in Christ, you created this monster. For you told me, I didn't know it was in the Bible. I didn't know it was in the Bible. I didn't know that it was in the Bible. You pointed out that I'm to be instant in season and out of season. The church told me that. You showed me in Isaiah 58, you told me to cry loud and spare not. I didn't even know that that existed. And then the old church mothers, I guess I need to, I need to try to find Mother, Mother Williams. Uh, I need to find Mother Baldwin. Mother Kendall, oh God, my, my buffer, I need to find Mark Holy because they told me that in holiness you can't take it off and put it on and take it off and put it on but they told me you had to wear it all the time. That's what they told me. Then you turn around and tell me that I'm supposed to compromise and take it back. The devil is a liar but I'm glad that through the fire and through the flood, God's been with us every step of the way. He keeps healing, he keeps making a way, he keeps delivering, and he's gonna keep on and on and on because the Lord made a promise. Somebody say yeah. Let, let me, let me. Wrap this one up. Let me wrap this up here. I'm not going to preach all that I, praise the Lord, had planned to preach to you today because I feel, I feel like taking off. But I heard in our text here, and the prophet saying something, he said, let all the nations. Look at him, stand there and say, let all the nations be gathered. Come on, all of y'all. All the nations. Bring me all of the movements. Come on, clan. Come on, Black Lives Matter. Come on, woke. Come on, come on. Come one, come all. All clowns. Come on. God, what's the name of it? Come on, comedics. All the rest of you. Let's stand. Let, let's see if your God can declare from where he's standing what shall be tomorrow. Let's see if your God is able, good God Almighty, to make a declaration and to bring it to pass because my God is an expert at that. My God, he, he told the children of Israel, I'm gonna bring you out and everything he said he's done and he keeps his word. He says to bring all the nation and let them all come together. And then he told me, he said in verse 10, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, you are my servants in whom I have chosen. And he said that you may believe and understand and know that I am he. 
upper room, we serve the God, a hallelujah, who was on, he's unequaled and he's uncreated. He's just God and there's nobody like him. He said, I, even I, I am the Lord. I have declared and have saved. I have shown when there was no strange God, when you didn't have them fake gods, I showed myself strong on your behalf. And then he gave him a history lesson. He said, don't you remember when the children of Israel was running away from Pharaoh? They came to the edge of the Red Sea. The Red Sea in front of them, Pharaoh's army behind them, and Moses said, Lord, what are we going to do? I heard God when he said to Moses, I want to tell you something. The army that you see today, you will never see them again forever. Moses, what's that you got in your hand? Moses said, I am my rod. I had the God of the Bible said, Stretch out your rod. Moses stretched out his rod. Oh, Lord. And the Red Sea divided. God sent an east wind. And the east wind began to blow. And I heard the Lord say, I'm going to blow until I make a way. Because the children of Israel are going to walk through on dry ground. The word way means road, means highway. Thank you, Jesus. The wind blew and God made a way for the children of Israel. They walked through walls of water on both sides, but he made a way. Somebody's going through walls of water on both sides. Pharaoh's army is behind you, but the Lord is making a way. Keep on walking. Somebody shout. He made a way for the children of Israel. They walk through on dry ground. They walk through he made a highway for them. They got through that. Thank you, Jesus. What a story. But I heard the Lord. See, there's a problem, though, with the story. The exodus took place around 1440 B.C. When Isaiah in the, the, the 700s B.C. When Isaiah prophesied and brought up how God made a way for the children of Israel in 14 BC. That was over 700 years ago. By the time Isaiah wrote this, Moses was dead. The children of Israel were dead. That group anyway. Joshua was dead. All of them was dead. That was their testimony. But I heard Isaiah say, now God's getting ready to give you your testimony. Because with them, God made a way. He made a highway in the sea. But with you, God's going to make a way in the desert. Because when you leave Babylon, you won't have to go through the sea. But you got to go through the desert where the roads are rough, the terrain is bad, cliffs and valleys, all kinds of things. But I'm God, and if I made a way for them back then, I'm able. Somebody shout, yeah, yes! Woo! He said, after 70 years, God's gonna make a way. You're gonna leave Babylon. 
You gonna leave there? Ask Ezra. Ask Nehemiah. Ask Zerubbabel. Ask Joshua. They'll tell you that he made a way for when the captives were released, they went back down to Jerusalem. God took care of them. He kept their silver. He kept their gold. He didn't let any animals, didn't let lions attack them, but didn't let trouble come. He made a way. He gave them that testimony. But I heard Isaiah say this in chapter 40. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight paths for your feet. Make a way in the desert because somebody is coming. In Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist stood up and said, I am the one Isaiah was talking about. We are making a way in the desert because the Lamb of God is coming. And I heard Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Won't he make a way? Won't he make a way? Paul said, there hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will make a way of escape that you're able to bear it. Won't he make a way? Won't he make a way? Won't he make a way? Say yeah! Say yeah! Yes! Woo! Somebody's shouting because they get it. What you're going through is the Lord making a way for you. He's making a way. He's making a way. And he's giving me my own testimony. Hey, now. position of strength because you've been through and you have your own testimony and you're able to tell somebody from experience I know that the Lord will somehow can I get a witness can I get a witness you lost your mother you lost your father you went through cancer you went through tough times you got your heart broken you got disappointed things didn't work out but the Lord came in the Lord stepped in and he fixed everything so you're able to say I know from a position of strength that he will he will ah, he will he'll make a way Woo! somebody praise him in here somebody praise him Hallelujah. He's giving you. He's giving you your own testimony. Woo! Been 
been through some things. <laughs> I told, I told a Jehovah Witness, you don't need to try to win me. I'm not winnable. So I've had some experiences. You can't, with a clever use of words, talk me out of this. Because he laid his hands on me. He healed my body so many times. He brought me through. He brought me through. He brought me out. He picked me up. He turned me around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. He's whispered. He visited me in the midnight hour. He's spoken to me. And it has come to pass. I have my own testimony. You have your testimony. Just wave your hands here. Ah, yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Jesus. Ah. Ah. Like a ship. Stars and river. Ah. Battered by. Ah. Ah. Angry sea. When the storms of life raging and the fury falls on me, oh, I look every time that I wondered why God's great fortune seemed to pass me by along. But I say to my soul, don't worry, the Lord will make a way somehow. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna pray. I wanna pray for somebody. I wanna pray. The Lord brought this to my mind. Someone just this week. Ask the Lord, Lord, what's going on? Somebody said, Lord, I don't know if I can handle this. Somebody been praying, God, take me through. Meet me at the altar while I pray for you. Oh, Lord. In the text, God said, I raised up the Chaldeans. Check this out. I raised up the Chaldeans for your sake. I sent them. Ain't that something? I sent the Chaldeans. They burnt the temple. They took your captive. Oh my Lord. They messed up everything. But I sent them for your sake. See, I, I needed to give you your own testimony. You heard about how I brought Moses out. And the children of Israel said, but now there's a new song. You're not going to be singing about what happened 700 years ago. You're going to sing about what happened after 70 years of bondage. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something else. God is going to fix it. Well, you ain't got to sing about, oh, Mary, don't you weep. And tell Martha not to moan. But if you do sing it, you'll still be in line. Because they used to say, well, what does Mary and Martha has to do with Pharaoh's army? The course, the cleverness of the writer, it was designed to cause you to think. It was a cleverly, cleverly written. I'm crying, Mary, oh, Mary, don't you weep. And Martha, don't you moan. Pharaoh's army got drowned in the Red Sea. See, but then the writer said, if I could, I surely would stand on the rock where Moses stood. Pharaoh's army got drowned in the sea. So Mary, Mary and Martha, if God could drown Pharaoh's army, surely God can raise Lazarus from the dead. So Mary 
And Martha, don't you weep. Don't weep. Tell Martha not to moan. I, I, I want to say to you on the altar, don't weep. Don't moan because God brought Babylon down. And if God could deliver the children of Israel from Babylon, if the Lord was able to raise up the Medes and the Persians, and the Persians came and conquered the Babylonians, then God moved on the heart of the Persian king to set the children of Israel free. If God could do that, God can move on the heart of that bank to give you that loan. God can move on the heart of that person to give you a break. God can move in your situation. And he will because he's giving you your testimony. Lord, just bless my children to get a new home. And I'm so proud and rejoicing. And they worked together and did it. But in the process, a few times where it didn't look like it's going to work out the way they thought. Now it was God all the time. And it ended up with a better deal. But the Lord knows how. To call down the Chaldean. When the Chal Chaldeans come and mess everything up. I, I, but, I, but I did it. I, I, I did it for your sake. I did it to show you that it's me. See, and see what happens is sometimes we jump out the process too fast. That would happen. Oh, but I give up. Oh. I'm going to go serve another God. Oh, I'm going to another church. Oh, I'm, I'm just bitter. No, no. See the thing through. See it through. See it through. If you let him, if you, if you let him, if you let him when he's done, you'll be better off. See it through. On the altar, look at the person next to you and say, see it through. Amen. Don't you bail on God. If you don't bail on God, God won't bail on you. Glory. Glory. He said, and I'm going to pray after I read this. He said, Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake have I sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans. It was for you. I brought them against you, and when the time was right, I'm bringing them down and set you free. It's God's doing. It's the Lord's doing. It's the Lord's doing. It's the Lord's doing. It's the Lord's. Oh, she cut on both sides. I'm giving you a testimony. He's giving me one. I see the Lord working on me, working through me, and doing things to me. It's a marvelous journey. He spanks me. God is the ultimate carrot and stick. Knows how to discipline. And then God keeps an apple or a carrot. Thank you, Lord.